Welcome back, everyone. We're doing another fun episode of Indie Reads Aloud. Today, Donna Newman is coming on the program, and she's going to read from her really sweet, cute, wonderful Annie the Porcupine series. Welcome, Donna. I'm so glad you're here today. Hi. Thank you for letting me come. Of course. I'm happy to have you. Um, I absolutely love your book. Uh, when I met you at a festival and got to page through, these are just some of the cutest books I've ever seen. And, and I love that you're, um, you're investigating a topic that we don't normally see in children's books. So I, I'm really happy to, to see that we're offering more content for young people. Thank you. That was the intent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're succeeding. <laughs> So Donna Newman lives in Clarkston, Michigan with her husband, Chris, with a master's degree in elementary education and a minor in early childhood development. She has spent over 20 years of her life teaching preschool and elementary school students. Throughout the majority of her career, her focus has been on young fives and kindergarten. Recently celebrating her 50th birthday, congratulations. That was a big uh, one. Yeah, it's always good. After that, they're all big ones. <laughs> um, Donna believes that her heart will always be at the age of five. It's a good place to be. A proud mother of three and grandmother of one, she cherishes the moments she spends with her family. Now that her children are adults and not present in the home as frequently as she would like, Donna keeps busy with her three cats, dog, and a diverse array of tropical fish. When it comes to reading, her interests are limitless. From the enchanting world of Harry Potter to the intriguing back of a shampoo bottle, she finds joy in exploring various literacy works. Another pastime is engaging in, mul in a multitude of games, including video games. I don't have enough um, hand-eye coordination for that. I can't, I'm not that great. Additionally, her love for travel has fueled a goal to visit all 50 of the United States. And she tells me that she has already experienced the wonders of 45 states, just five left. Uh, what are the five that you haven't been to yet? The two big ones, Hawaii and Alaska. We okay. have a trip planned for Alaska for next year. And then the Southern states, Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Wow, so that, that's interesting that, that that one little microcosm of a territory you haven't been to yet. That's good. I know, and it's funny because I've been to like Arkansas and Texas. I'm like, why didn't I just keep going? But yeah. <laughs> so the book you're going to read from today is I Don't Celebrate Anything. And this is Annie the Porcupine. Tell me about where you got the idea to start this kind of a series. Well, as a teacher, we always were told you know, in a young age that children should have, that books should be mirrors and windows. So every child should be, be able to look in a book and see themselves. And that every child should be able to look in a window and see it's something different. And as a teacher, we all, I have tons and tons of books about every holiday, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, sure. everything. But there was not that book for that child who didn't celebrate holidays. And as a teacher, I've had tons of experience with children in my classroom. Plus, I was raised in a family that did not celebrate holidays. So I saw this need for it. I never could find it when I finally had the time because COVID had hit. My husband said, write the book. So that's that's the reason book one came. It was something that I always knew there was a need for. I just needed the time to do it. I think it's an awesome idea, um, that idea of inclusivity for little ones. Um, and to allow um, a greater sphere of understanding for little minds so that they can learn that their experience is not exclusive to the world. Right. And it's not about why Annie doesn't. It's more about she just doesn't. And But look what all the things she does instead. So, you know, that was the whole point is. And by doing it that way, I was able to hit other kids who also are other people who also had some of those hey I didn't sell have a Christmas tree because we didn't have money for a Christmas tree or Got you it. know we lived in another state or another country and they did different holidays different so you know so that was that was the whole point when I wrote it I was thinking that one child but I found out that my audience is bigger 
than what I thought. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, now we are writing for a worldwide audience. So that's pretty cool. And through your books, you're able to connect children in that way. And I, I just think it's fantastic. If you are ready, please, ma'am, I know that you're going to share your screen so that we can see these glorious illustrations. So when you're ready, please take the microphone and read aloud. All right. All right. So it was the last day of school before winter break. Annie couldn't wait for the day to end, even though it was just beginning. On the bus to school, Maggie asked Annie, guess what? Last night we dec decorated our Christmas tree. Did you get your tree yet? No, Annie said. No, but it's almost Christmas. I know, Annie said, but my family doesn't put up a Christmas tree. Maggie's eyes grew wide. How can you celebrate Christmas without a tree? We don't celebrate Christmas, Annie said. Really? Maggie said. That's weird. I thought everybody celebrated Christmas. Annie looked out the window, hoping the day would end quickly. When the bus arrived at school, Annie pushed her way off and ran inside before Maggie could ask her more, any more questions about Christmas. When she got to her cubby, Annie saw CJ eating something from his backpack. What are you eating? She asked. Guilt, CJ said. I got it last night for Hanukkah. It was the first time I got to light the menorah. Mom said I was finally big enough. Pretty cool. What did you get for Hanukkah? Nothing, Annie mumbled. Annie put her stuff away and walked into the classroom. Christina waved at Annie to come sit by her. How do you spell mascara, she asked. I'm writing my letter to Santa and want to ask for some glitter mascara and lipstick. I don't know. Sound it out, Annie barked, putting her books down. Did you write your letter yet, Christina asked. No, Annie said firmly. Why not? Christina was confused by Annie's bad mood. I don't get gifts from Santa. You don't get gifts from Santa. Do you get gifts for Hanukkah? No, Annie said, I don't get presents, okay? Really, no presents? That's weird. I thought everyone got presents. Maybe you need to be nicer and then you would get presents. Annie opened her book and tried to ignore Christina. She really couldn't wait for the day to end. At lunch, Annie didn't want to sit with anyone. She was tired of the questions about presents and why she didn't get any. Campbell didn't seem to notice Annie's bad mood as he sat across from her. He was humming jingle bells. I love Christmas songs, Campbell said. Don't you? Annie ignored the question and kept eating. Do you know what you want from Santa? Annie just kept eating her lunch. Are you okay? Campbell asked. I'm fine. I don't listen to Christmas music and I don't get presents from Santa. Really, but do you? And I don't get presents for Hanukkah either, Annie interrupted. She got up and left the cafeteria. Annie was hoping for outdoor recess so she could find a spot away from her friends, but it began to rain, which meant recess was inside. She looked around the room and saw Michael playing with blocks. He didn't usually talk to Annie, so she figured he'd be good to play with. Can I play with you, she asked. Michael looked up and smiled. Sure. Please don't ask me any questions, Annie thought as she sat down. But as soon as she hit the floor, Michael leaned over and whispered to her, why don't you get presents? Annie sighed. I don't celebrate holidays, she said in her best calm indoor voice, but she must have said it louder than she thought because now the whole room was looking at her. Christopher called out, do you celebrate Kwanzaa? My neighbors celebrate Kwanzaa and they invited our family over for this feast. Ew, the food was awesome. No, I don't celebrate anything. The room got very quiet and everyone started whispering to one another. Annie's cheeks got redder than a beet as she heard what they were saying. She doesn't celebrate anything, no presents. Her family is so weird. Annie wanted to cry and scream at the same time. For the rest of the day, Annie tried her best to ignore the excitement of her classmates as they talked about their holiday plans, but she couldn't help wonder if maybe they were right. Maybe my family is weird. School finally ended and Annie rode the bus home. When she got to her stop, her older brother, Lee, was waiting for her at the curb. Hurry up, Annie, he called out. We're going to be late. Late for what? Don't be silly. We got to go. Mom and dad are waiting in the car. Where are we going? Annie asked, trying to pull his hand off her arm. Then she remembered. We're going to see Granny and Pappy, my favorite place to visit in the whole world. She broke free from Lee and ran to the car as fast as she could. Last one to the car has to sit in the middle. 
The road trip to Granny and Pappy's took two full days, but it was always fun. Mom led sing-alongs and Dad told jokes. They always stayed at the same hotel with an indoor pool and always stopped at their favorite restaurant for carrot soup. Granny and Pappy's house was a cabin deep in the woods. Annie's two cousins, Dean and Dorothy, lived next door. There was always a ton of snow in winter. As soon as the car stopped at the end of the long driveway, Annie jumped out and gave everyone hugs. Then she grabbed a sled to slide down her favorite hill. As she walked her sled up the hill, Annie noticed that Pappy had built a giant snow fort. That will be fun, she thought. Dean and Dorothy were already building snowmen. Annie couldn't wait for the annual snowball fight they had every year. Even Granny and Pappy would join in. As she got to the top of the hill and looked around, Annie thought about all the kids at school and wondered, is this really that weird? That night, Uncle and Dad built a giant bonfire and everyone sat around drinking hot cocoa. Granny always remembered that Annie liked 10 mini marshmallows in her cup. This isn't so weird, Annie thought, as she sipped the warm cocoa and felt Granny kiss the top of her head. The rest of the week, they got to eat all their favorite family foods, asparagus, tacos, vegetable stew, green bean casserole, and Granny's famous carrot cake. This is definitely not weird, Annie thought almost every day. This is awesome. And on the last day, while Annie was snuggled on Pappy's lap in front of the bonfire, he said something to her that she would never forget. I know we don't celebrate holidays, Annie, but we do celebrate our family. You don't get any presents wrapped in boxes, but you do get the gifts of love and togetherness. We don't decorate a tree or light a menorah, but we have our own traditions that we do together. I think it's the most wonderful time of the year. I hope you do too. And Annie realized she did. The end of my book. Yay! That was awesome. I, I absolutely love the message. It gave me goosebumps at the end. Because my, although we celebrated holidays, my grandfather felt exactly the same way and he was constantly putting the emphasis on family. So I, I'm really, really glad to see that you've provided a story like this for little people. Where did you get the idea to make your main character a porcupine? How did that happen? As I said, oh, I had said at the beginning that my husband said, Donna, you have time, you know, I, we were all in lockdown. Um, yeah. I, my cousin, who's the closest thing I have to a sister, because I have five brothers, her and I were talking about it. And she goes, Donna, you need to write, you need to write it. What do you want to do? And I said, well, I really want it to be an animal. And she said, a bunny. And I go, every book I read is a bunny or a turtle. I do not want a bunny or a turtle. But I did know I was going to name the book Annie after my daughter. My daughter's a little snarky and always has been a little snarky. And so her and I both came up with porcupine at the same time. That's so. a great idea. That's awesome. I love that you incorporated an unusual animal with an unusual message. I think the two are really married well together. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your illustrator. So I do not illustrate my own books. I actually wrote the book not knowing what, what to do from there. And so I reached out to a company that, um, and I said, hey, this is the situation. I have this book. Um, I don't know where to start. And they said, well, let, let's look at it and let's see what we can do to help you. And they, they immediately said, we've got this, li this list of illustrators that we'll send to you. And I said, okay. And, um, they, so they sent me some samples of like seven or eight different illustrators. And I said, Hey, you know what? Can I just send a page of my book to the, like three of these illustrators and see what they yeah. come up with? And soon as I got her first illustration and it was literally not even watercolored at this point it was literally just a drawing as soon as I saw it I knew it was Annie so um I said that's who I want so and her, she and her and I work really well together there's been several mm -hmm. times and not as much in book one but in book two where she says I know this is what you wanted but after reading the book how would you feel if so we really have become a collaboration and even through book three there's there seems to be a lot more collaboration like she now knows my style and I know hers that's fantastic I love it when authors and illustrators can come together and and create that magical end product uh, when you can you can actually talk about it and banter ideas back and forth and it truly does become a book created by two people rather than just one so I, I think it's fantastic I can't wait for you to come back on the show next time and read your next book 
thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me.